I've got a 7.3, it's a 2001 F550, but this will be the same on a 250, 350, or 450. This has the 7.3 manual in it. Today, what we're gonna be doing is changing the steering gearbox. You can maybe kind of see it down there, but it is leaking a ton of fluid. You can see I, this rag here. So, first step, First step is gonna be disconnecting and removing this battery over here. I've got the negative terminal removed from that battery over there. Got this battery ready to come out. I'm gonna need a 5 16th right here to remove this little cedar for the battery. Gonna remove the air box. Gonna remove all this area right here. We're gonna to need to remove this hot intercooler line and then we'll get down there and we'll see what else we need to do to get at the steering gearbox. We're making some progress, got the air box out, the battery out. I'm using this Milwaukee Fuel 3.8 driver and if you don't have one of these and do a lot of automotive work, highly recommend. Just bust these nuts free. They've been in here for who knows how long. A lot of torque and just fantastic little tool. We have the air box out now, the intercooler line is detached and out and this little high pressure, or the uh, power steering line return from the Hydro Boost is off. And you can see that's the box down there that we've got to change with all those lines coming in and out of it. Now I'm going to open up the new one so I can kind of get a visual on what needs to be taken off and disconnect the drag link on the bottom and then pull the pitman arm. Here is the new steering gearbox from Blue Top. And I've had a redhead installed on my truck before. I didn't do it myself, but I was pleased with it. And this is a different truck, but I uh, heard good reviews about the Blue Top and also that it does not void the warranty to adjust these. So I decided to give these this one a go on our company truck and see how we like it. So got that out of there. Comes with flushing and bleeding installation guide and then um, just a warning to make sure the wheels all centered up before um, installing it so now I can pull the lines on here and get to replacing the box here we're connecting the drag link from the pitman arm and just pull the cotter pin that's in this castle nut Take the castle nut off most of the way but then leave it on just a little bit so that when you put your pickle fork in here you can give it a nice tap then it falls down but catches it then you can take the tension off with your hand take the castle nut off and ease it to the ground first step to taking off these two lines up here you can see we've got them right one right there and one right here is pull this plastic shroud back and try not to do what i did when i just pulled this back is this little clip right here clips onto this hose and holds it in place and i was a little too violent and it just snapped right off of there that's supposed to go over this steering connection here and keep it from getting tangled in any of these wires so unfortunately that's broken now but should still go back on and should be okay but now we'll pull off those two our steering lines. Pulling the steering shaft is pretty straightforward. It's just a 13 millimeter bolt right there and then just slid back up into itself. And now all we've got left to disconnect are these three bolts right here. They bolt the gearbox on from the side and what I've got here is just a 14 millimeter to half inch breaker, uh, half inch extender to my uh, breaker bar loosen them up and then I'm going to switch over to this bad boy and pull them out of there then that thing should be ready to take out of there got the gearbox out of the truck and I've got the pitman arm here I just used the grinder here to make a little flat spot here and a little flat spot here because my pitman arm puller is not was not quite wide enough to fit on there as was because it's a pretty big pitman arm. 
I also had to modify the Pittman arm puller just a little bit right here and right here. I ground it open because this shaft was a little bit too big for it. But now it slips on there just fine. We'll screw that thing down and hope this thing pops right off of here. If it doesn't, I can add some heat to it, but hope it'll pull right off. I just put this thing on here and started cranking down on it. It got pretty tight, so I just took this hammer and tapped it a bit like that. And now you can see it's wobbly on there. So now we'll pull this guy off. Love that thing. And then this guy came right off. And that thing is indexed straight down on that like so. So I'm gonna remember that. Now, ready to put the new one on. So now we've got the new blue top steering gear box back in the truck. Got this line hooked up and that line hooked up as well. I replaced the O-ring on the larger line right here, the pressure line, because it was uh, kind of disintegrated. So, torqued down the Pitman arm, uh, held it up in here, then the bolts just come through the side right there. It's these three bolts right here. Uh, let me grab the light so you can see. Those three bolts right there, they just go right back in. Those bolts get torqued to 111 foot-pounds. The Pitman arm gets torqued to 225 foot-pounds, or in my case, I just ran the, ratchet, uh, the impact on it for a little while. And you can see the blue alignment marks up where center on the gearbox and the steering shaft is marked. They aren't lining up right now, but what I did is I centered up the, the uh, steering wheel inside and the tires, and then I put the Pitman arm in the same orientation that it came off of, of the old gearbox onto the new one. And then I put the drag link right onto the Pitman arm. So it kind of self-centered itself up. So I think that'll be good. And then I believe there's only one way that this steering shaft is gonna be able to go on. But uh, I think that'll do all right. I'll test it out and make sure, but that seems logical to me. So now what we're ready to do. Oh, by the way, something else I did was I filled up this reservoir with fresh Mercon V transmission fluid because that's what these trucks take before I connected up these lines here and let it push down through that hose there all the extra uh, the nasty power steering fluid dra drained it out just let gravity feed it through the cooler and out onto the ground before I hooked up the new lines then once I hook up the new lines I'll do a bleed and probably take this line off up here this return line off you can't really see it because of the tuner in there but um, it's the, the return line off, off of there and take this little clear hose and flush the complete system again and i'll show you that when i do that i've got my steering shaft attached there i just put some blue loctite on that little crimp nut bolt right there and that is a 13 millimeter gets torqued to 36 foot pounds Or just multiply by 12 for inch pounds. What I did. I gotta use a couple hands here. When I uh, reattached the drag link, like I was saying, the blue line that was supposed to line up with that portion right there that's on the steering spline, it was turned just a little bit. So, um, this only goes on one way, the shaft, the steering shaft onto this point. So steering wheel is still straight. And so I tried to put it on straight, but no, kind of like what I was thinking, I had to turn the wheel just a little bit and then it slipped right on. So I'm happy with that. That means these wheels are turned just a little bit and I can't really tell it, but everything should line up properly. Now, when I pulled this little guard off here, 
it usually clips on over this little piece here, but it snapped when I tried to pull it off. So I'm just gonna slide it back to where it was there. Probably drill a little hole right here and put a zip tie around this line to here to just kind of hold it in place. Probably wouldn't even need to do that because gravity is gonna hold it in spot, but hey, why not? All right, we've got the power steering gearbox back installed. Then we flushed the system, kind of blood the system, jack up the front wheels and start the engine, making sure this thing continues to remain full of fluid and cycle the, so kind of a two person job, cycle the steering wheel back and forth and back and forth until you stop getting bubbling. And then to flush the system, that's kind of to bleed out the, the air from the system. And then to flush the system, this hose right here, if you just take it off uh, right up here, you can see kind of back there because it's just a little pinch clamp like this that comes off the top of there. And then throw a piece of 3 8 ID tubing on there, preferably clear, and run it to a little drain pan. And then press the brake and release it and keep filling the reservoir with fluid, not letting it get down too low so that it sucks air. Then you can watch all the old fluid come out and then the bright red new fluid will come out and that's when you know you're completely uh, through the system with fresh fluid. So then I'm just putting the intercooler hot side piping back on. Then I'm gonna put the battery case back in. Uh, make sure to hook up your intake air temperature sensor. I'm gonna hook up the battery. I have this on here because I hooked up one battery and I didn't want the positive of this side touching the other touching the frame and shorting out so i've got the other battery disconnected though again so yep we're just going to put everything back together this is the last little piece to go in hooked up the positive and the negative on both batteries again and this little piece just holds in the battery you can see it goes right down there just put it in there and then it's a 516 just like that Test drive time. Okay, we are doing the test drive and it is perfect. Steering wheel is super tight. Very smooth. And um, it, uh, the brakes are firm, very firm. Don't get any whining from the power steering pump. And the uh, reason we replaced this, the gearbox was pretty good as far as tightness. It definitely wasn't this good. But the reason we replaced it is because the seal where the pitman arm attaches, the drop down shaft, the, the seal had deteriorated enough and it dumped fluid in about, over the course of about five miles, I was at the store and it just gushed. And by the time I got home, I pretty much had no fluid left. But you can see it's just smooth as butter now. So good deal.